Hey everybody, and welcome back to the world of Bindi and the Dark Revival. Today we are back inside of Bindi and the Dark Revival to play the archives, as we can see right here. Now, I don't know whether or not you got to complete the whole game or not to unlock the archives, because that's what you had to do back in Bindi and the Ink Machine. Whenever they had the archives in there, you had to, like, complete the rest of the game before you unlocked the archives. Uh, lucky for me, though, I already completed the entire game, and I recorded all of it, so if y'all missed those parts uh, whenever I uploaded them uh, back, back then, I think it was like a couple months ago, I played this whole game, I completed all the chapters, and it was so fun. And now we just got a little speck of more Bindi content. We just got a little bit more Bindi content. Uh, just enough to please us while we're waiting for anything else. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really excited to check this out. Especially because, I don't know, I just love Bindi and the Dark Revival. It is like such a good game. Barely any bad things about it. There's just so much, like amazingness to it and so much stuff that it does better than like all the other mascot horror games oh well hello there okay oh what the heck hello okay exit right there okay I don't want to exit let's explore whoa the archives Welcome to the archives. Bindi and the Dark Revival is filled with numerous characters that each had a critical role to play in the progression of the game. Here in the archives, you will learn a little bit about them in an up-close and personal way. Feel free to explore. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. My frame rate ain't doing too good, though. Okay. Wow, look at that. Oh, we're starting off with Bindi. Bindi, the iconic imp, was redesigned in, for the Dark Revival to stand out a bit from his traditional cartoon appearance by giving him a suit of clothes. He possessed some minor changes or challenges, specifically creating a face that supported the classic Bindi eerie smile. Oh, yeah? Uh, but still managed to be heartwarming in the right conditions. He is a fan favorite, so his design had to be just right. During production, we originally uh, envisioned Bindi to talk with a series of cute squeaks. Oh, wow, okay, that would have actually, I can see that happening, that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, to contrast the dark, low voice of the Ink Demon. But, this turned out to be very distracting, and the idea was scrapped pretty early on. That's so cool, though. That is really cool. I think they, I think they really, they really nailed it with Bindi's design. They really did what they were trying to do. They really completed, like, what they were trying to do with it. And then over here, speak of the devil, it is the Ink Demon. Wow, you got the Ink Demon and you got a uh, Beast Bindi. Wow, I love Beast Bindi. I love, like, he's he seems to be, like, a lot more scaled down in this model, but whenever we're playing as Beast Bindi in the game, he's, like, a fucking huge. He is huge as shit. Uh, but, yeah. As the world of the Dark Revival becomes more complex and established, we realize the Ink Demon's design needed a complete rethink to match our new tone. Agreed, yeah. Uh, previous versions of his appearance looked absolutely silly when placed in a world alongside the other characters. Oh, uh, oh yeah, because I guess the other design, like, I guess, like, a lot of people don't really like the ink machine, like, ink demon design from the ink machine. No amount of creepy music or screen effects could conceal how out of place he looked. The Ink Demon needed to look different than everything else in the world and show a natural progression of the Ink Demon's evolution as Wilson held the cycle in place. That is cool. I, did, I think they especially... Oh, well, there's a bunch of dead people. And there's the tape. There's the end tape. Oh, and you get to... S oh, there's more about Beast Bindi as well. Bro, I feel like I think they really did a good uh, job with the design of the Ink Demon. I think it is much, much better than whatever they had going on back in the Ink Machine game. Alright, here we go. Beast Bindi. Returning for the climax of the Dark Revival, Beast Bindi was also uh, revised with the mindset of making him far more powerful and beast-like. Yeah, that was my like main criticism of Chapter 5 of like the Ink Machine game. It was because like Beast Bindi, tiny as fuck. He was like so tiny. Well, I mean, he wasn't tiny, but like 
he, he, you call him Beast Bendy, but he's not like the size of a beast, is what I meant to say. Uh, traditionally, in most horror games, they tend to build to a point where the main villain becomes the final form monster as a final boss. It's practically our, a trope. Our idea, what if you got to play as that final form instead? That was an amazing idea that they had, bro. Because that literally, like, I remember... The first time getting to play as Beast Bendy uh, for like this final chapter, I like freaked out, bro, because like it was just such a cool thing, like so so cool. Oh, and then we got the ink machine right here. Oh, we got it's like the original. It's like looking like the classic ink machine design too, designed by Thomas Connor of the Gent Corporation. Oh, we're getting some lore here. Stolen by Joey Drew. Retrieved by Archgate and once again reclaimed by Gent. The Ink Machine's next adventure is a mystery. Wow, so that's just a bunch of lore. That's not like behind the scenes stuff. Huh, so it's unclear what's next for the Ink Machine. Possibly a Bendy 3 or a Bendy movie or a Bendy TV show. I don't know. I think we're going to be getting something Bendy related soon. I feel like they that really they really have like a lot of opportunity to make like a brand new uh, like piece of media with Bendy whether it's a movie or another game uh, where like the ink creatures are also like going into the real world uh, like we got to see with Audrey and uh, like the baby Bendy. Uh, but yeah. Audrey, parentheses, cartoon. Audrey is a kind-hearted rouge with uh, courage, determination, some flaws, and a deep, dark past. Lore? Uh, to make our story work, we needed a newcomer to the cartoon studio world, and Audrey was the perfect fresh eyes to help the experience the, experience the adventure. Huh? Wait, is that a typo or something? From day one of production, we knew that if people didn't connect with Audrey by the end of the game, the game itself wouldn't be successful. That is true, yeah? Fortunately, she turned out to be quite memorable indeed, and stands out uh, from the members, from the other members of the cast. Yeah, yeah, I, I really see what they did there, because it's like you can't really have a boring, like, protagonist. And Audrey was a really good protagonist. I really like uh, Audrey's inclusion in this game. I think she's, like, a really, really, like, cool add-on. Uh, Wilson, cartoon. Wilson was the difficult character to balance. At first, the players were purposely led to believe that he is a one-note character, obviously evil with the over-the-top villain personality. Yeah, I remember, like, whenever we first saw him, he was just so, like, stereotypically villain-like. It was so obvious that he was a bad guy. But as the story progresses, we see other sides of the character, and the player becomes molded with who this man really is. In one draft, Wilson was written as a servant of Nathan Ark Jr. as a separate character at the time, but the story made far more sense when the two characters became one, eliminating a lot of the needless narrative complexity. Yeah, yeah, I think it's cool just having him like not be a servant, just be like the main big bad guy. But wait, there is more. Let's see what is over here. Oh, well, hello there. Aren't you a new face? Oh, well, we're gonna get to her in a minute. Just hold on. Uh, Butcher Gang. Barley, Charlie, and Edgar, the three original members of the Butcher Gang, were formed from the Ink Machine, con deconstructed by Alice Angel for body parts, and bond together to stay alive. Wow, okay. Wait, Clary, Ghost Girl. Wait, hold on. Let's go to her. Clary, the Ghost Girl, although... Or when you begin to examine her closely, uh, Clary appears to be a shell with perhaps someone inside. Yeah, so I was lucky enough that in my playthrough of Chapter 2 and like the rest of the game, I never opened her up. I never came across her character and I never like opened up, up her like chest deal. Uh, but if I did, I was I would have been in for like a scary time, man, because like... Like, apparently she, like, just jump scares you randomly at any given time in the game whatsoever. Uh, so it would have been, would have made the experience a lot more scary if I did open her up. But, unfortunately, I did miss her in my own playthrough. So here is her. This is her. Her eyes sort of follow, do her eyes follow me? Uh, no, not really. I thought they did for a second, but no, they do not. 
Uh, the Butcher Gang members, I'm glad that they're in this game. I liked their appearance in the Ink Machine uh, enough. I think, at the very least, their design is cool. Uh, the Keepers, Wilson's Deadly Guards, and Scientists, they aren't perfect, but the Keepers will get the job done, no matter the cost. That is cool, that is really cool. Faceless beings made of gears and wires with no sense of mortality. Ordered around like cattle, a creation of uh, living without purpose. That is cool, yeah. I, I, I liked the Keepers, I thought they were like uh, pretty good as like a brand new villain to be introduced. Uh, is this still that same? Oh my, oh, okay then. I was not expe- okay. Hey, Sammy Lawrence. Well, if it ain't THE Sammy Lawrence, THE Sammy Lawrence himself, I remember you, buddy. How's it going? The famous music composer of the studio, Sammy Lawrence, originally had a slightly larger role in the story of the Dark Revival. Oh, wait, he, he, he was gonna have, a, like, a bigger story? Wait. But, in a story already filled with so many characters, making them all play a meaningful part became a challenge. Ah, He was ultimately sidelined in favor of telling a more coherent storyline. Although, it is interesting to note that Sammy Lawrence appears to have mastered the flow ability in Bendy and the Ink Machine long before Porter and Audrey could wield it. Did Sammy Lawrence, has he, like, flown before? I am in, I'm still stuck on the part where he had, like, a bigger role. I, I, I would have loved to see more Sammy Lawrence in the Dark Revival. In fact, in fact, this is so funny, bro. Literally, in my, like, final, in my final playthrough where I was playing the final chapter, uh, where I was, like, Beast Bendy and I was attacking all the doors and stuff, and then Sammy Lawrence made an appearance to help me, I was so already excited and hyped up with everything else that was happening, I didn't even realize Sammy Lawrence was there in the final battle. I n didn't even realize he was there. But now I have realized. So thank you, Sammy Lawrence, for helping me defeat uh, the cycle, or stop the cycle, uh, at the end of the Dark Revival. Oh, okay, so now we're getting into, like, a long hallway-looking place. Oh, wow. Amok? Yeah, I remember Amok, Lord Amok, the, the ruler of the sewer cult. Wow, yeah. Though he was weak in a fight, his name will simply never die. I felt like he didn't really have much of an importance. He just kind of like showed up. Oh, wow. Oh, hello. Hello there. I was not expecting you to be behind me. Uh, Alice Angel. What's up, girl? The self-appointed queen of the studio. Alice Angel is one of the most memorable fa- Yeah, she is. Her face is really damn rem memorable. Uh, yeah. Forever lost in a tide of insanity. Uh, she is an absolute delight to write for as a character. Uh, an angel with many layers, time will only tell if this inky Tempress will ever reappear. Huh, so is she gonna, like, make an appear in, like, a third game or something? I hope she does. I really like her character, and she has a really good storyline for a villain about how she wants to be beautiful and all that shit. Yeah, she is, she, she's really cool. And I especially liked how they killed her off in this one, like, it was just a big parallel to, like, the first game. Well, ain't you just a bundle of joy, buddy, aren't you? Aha, uh -huh. King Widow. Oh, I hated you in my playthrough. Uh, the windows have begun to infest where the light grows darkness. Their king, the biggest, most feared, will only emerge from his nest when its young are at the end. King Widow. Uh, I hated, I hated that boss fight just because it was like spiders. Well, look at that. Look at that happy man. What a happy guy. Look at that smile. I just keep turning around just seeing big ink monsters just staring at me and shit. What the fuck? Ship Ahoy Doodly. Created to serve the dual purpose of dethroning the ink demon in the cartoon world and also upstaying Joey Drew in the eyes of Wilson's father. Ship Ahoy Dooley is a mysterious sailor with his own eerie grin. That is definitely an eerie grin, yeah. <laughs> he kind of looks like the Joker with his, like, smile and shit, to be honest. Like, his smile kind of makes him look like that old cartoon Joker, if you know what I mean. Along with his sidekick, Crackle the Crab. Wait, who's his sidekick, Crackle the Crab? It is unknown just what kind of cartoon adventures they would have had together. 
Wow, so it's like if he wasn't like an evil, weird monster. Th oh, yeah, there's his crab sidekick. Oh, yeah, I just now saw that. Is that also like the bottom half of him is like a crab? I thought it was like a weird spider thing, but I guess it might be crab. He might be like part crab or something. That's pretty cool. And then finally, we got the blob, the lurker. The lurker, or the lurker, uh, or Steve as he became known. Is Steve, is that like a name a YouTuber gave him or something? And then it's just like the Bendy and the Dark Revival team, they're just embracing that name. Was originally created as a brute type enemy that would free Rome uh, the way lost ones do, but ultimately felt unnecessary as a random ink demon encounters already fulfilled the role. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, traverse locations. In the end, the Lurker found a much better calling as an unlikely ally, effectively expanding him into more than just a typical enemy. That's cool. He looks really cool. He's like, pretty much like a big, it's like if the Incredible Hulk became an ink demon with how big boy he is. Alright. Bye, Alice Angel. Bye, uh, Akamok, Ak Akkok. Ascock, that's your name, Ascock, that's your new name now, Ascock. Bye, Sammy Lawrence, it was good seeing y'all again. That is really nice, this is like, sort of like an epilogue, almost. Yeah, you got Porter, I remember Porter. Uh, as the cycle was held in place, and with the influence of the ink demon held at bay, uh, the cartoon world was able to grow. The advance creating such new characters as Porter, a lost one who came to claim a new identity as an explorer. That's cool, I like that premise, like, it's just like a lost one wants to be more than just a lost one, so he becomes, he becomes an explorer, so he's no longer lost. He would have featured a far more serious tone than the first game of Bendy and the Ink Machine, and lighthearted innocence would help the players feel some warmth in his inky world of sorrow. Yeah, that's cool, that's really cool. And then of course you have, oh, Haiti. Oh yeah, I remember uh, Haiti, she, we played hide and seek with her, and then she gave me like a key or something like that. It is believed that Haiti has spent some time in the pit, uh, a prison set by Wilson and the Keepers. It is unclear why. Most likely she was able to access places she shouldn't have. The experience in the pit changed her, as it does many, reverting her into a childlike state, longing for happiness again. So I feel like if we do get another Bendy game, I feel like she might return, because it, it seems like she still has like a bit of a mystery behind her that is still yet to be solved. Nice. Can I sprint in this game? Uh, I don't think I can sprint. That's alright, though. Now, let's check this side. Of course, we have some posters right here. And don't think I missed good old Joey Drew here. What's up, my man? My man, Joey Drew. And in parentheses, memory, because he's still technically dead. The man, the legend, the memory, creating this version of Joey Drew was both, can I, wait, can I do this with the Joey Drew voice, was both an exciting and daunting process. It was clear from the start that this Joey would be different from the ones from the original Bendy and the Ink Machine game. This was a man with all the guilt from a past life, but without the experience to fully understand it. The real Joey Drew made many mistakes, but ultimately learned from them. This doesn't absolve him of his sins, but at the end of his life, he was able to help correct some of them, and help fight the darkness he created. Was that a good, was that a good Joey Drew impression? I think that was sort of good. And then of course we got uh, Betty, a faithful maid, among other things, to Wilson. As always the among other things, I'm thinking that's not lore, that's just like a little adult kind of hint in there, if you know what I mean. Where, 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 where? Betty was an important character to the story of the Dark Revival. Wait, she was? <laughs> Wait, as a failed experiment and some uh, relativity in the new cartoon studio, she was able to give a somewhat different point of view on the state of the world. We have purposely left it unclear if Betty was on Wilson's plot to harvest Audrey, or if she was a bystander behind her mask. Uh, there are still answers to be found. So, we're probably going to get to see more Betty too in another uh, game, another Bendy game. We'll probably get to see more of her as well. That's really cool. So, like, she still has a mystery amongst her as well. 
Okay, now let's see. Oh, okay, well, there's a human. I was not expecting to see color. Uh, would you look at that? Now we are... Is that... Okay, no, that's Nathan Arch. Okay, so now we're in the, like, real-life zone area. This is Nathan Arch. I can kind of see... I can kind of see, like, the father resemblance to to good old Wilson right here. But anyways, yeah, let's read. Wait, what's over here? Nothing, just a couple. Wait, the illusion of the living. Apparently you get one of the other endings by, like, collecting all of those books. And then, like, you can get, like, a different ending by completing the game. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that. Uh, on uh, the Xbox version, uh, just so I can try out the Xbox version, and it's just so I can get the other endings. Maybe I'll record it as well. Audrey's donut. No, you can't have it. Dash Audrey. What? Come on, Audrey. Why can't I have your donut? You're a standing still statue. Why can't I just like take your donut? Uh, <laughs> Nathan Arch, sir. Nathan Arch was everything Joey Drew wasn't. He worked hard built up from nothing, and never compromised his integrity. Joey Drew had big dreams, but Nathan accomplished his own dreams, and he and his wife, Tessa, wait, have we heard that name before in the Lord Tessa? I really recognize that name. Uh, raised his son as much love and care as they could, despite Nathan's career pressure. Sadly, his son did not share Nathan's natural talent for business and enterprise. Yeah, Wilson. Wilson, he didn't. He didn't share. He didn't share that stuff. By the way, for Wilson, haunted by the impossible shadow of Nathan Art, Wilson sought to achieve something that would make his father proud. By luck, he stumbled upon the ink machine and was able to become the Cartoon World's new master, holding the cycle in place. He continued his experiments, experiments that could not fully be realized until the ink demon was purged. However, unnaturally entering to and from the ink realm has taken a toll on Wilson's physical being, slowly robbing him of his health. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can see that. I never really thought that myself. I just thought because it's like the age difference is why he might be like a bit... Well, no, is that, is that why he's missing the eye? Because he like keeps on going from ink world to normal world? Huh. Audrey, the unknowing daughter of the animated animation pioneer, Audrey has blocked out the memory of her past after losing her father. But his role in her life was not over. A talented animator and artist, her skills landed her a job at Archgate. Was it fate that led her to reunite with Joey Drew's machine? The machine of her birth? Or was it planned? Are there going to be some higher-ups pulling the strings of all this whole bendy shit? Is there going to be like some higher-ups that are like causing all this to happen? It's like the CEO of like Arch or something like that. Instead of the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment, there's a different CEO in Bindi that's also pulling the strings. I don't know, I guess we'll find out next game, if there is a next game. I hope there is, because I loved uh, Bindi and the Dark Revival. I really hope they do a new one. And here is a couple other posters sent from above. Uh, Sheep Songs, uh, Little Devil Darling. Some of those are old. I think all of them might be old, actually. But yeah, that, this is really cool. I really like this. Is that it, by the way? Uh, that might be it. I think, no, I think there's still this one area. Aha, uh -huh, there is! Oh, we got the original trio up in here. We got Allison, Henry, and my man Boris. Boris, no longer an asshole, hopefully. I guess we're about to read more about him. Yeah, that is cool. We got the original trio here. Yes, sir. Henry Stein. The original cycle breaker. Yeah, he the first. He's the first. He has seen everything. Uh, he is the ghost of a man who lost his purpose years ago. Once filled with finding a way to escape the tortures of the ink demon and finding his way home to his wife. Henry is now left with the cold reality of being a recreation of the person he thought he was. Saved as a special surprise for fans of the Bindi and the Ink Machine. Yeah! He was a really cool surprise. I really liked his little cameo he made in here. Uh, Henry was strictly admitted from all public discussion of the character during the entire production, which spawned several years. Oh, but Henry 
uh, returned with a very satisfying face reveal. Bro pulled a dream. Bro got a face reveal. Bro. So I guess the people making this game, they couldn't, like, talk about Henry's appearance. I guess because they didn't want it to be spoiled or they don't want to, like, leak anything. That's really cool. That is really cool. Now let's talk about my girl, Allison. She looking pretty fine. Uh, returning un from another victory over the Ink Demon, Allison is always the voice of reason, a beacon of hope. Allison's design was carefully upgraded from the previous Bendy and the Ink Machine game to maintain her personality, but with a more fit, fit, whatever that word is. The purpose of meeting Allison so early in the campaign was to introduce the player to a familiar face after the main introduction. At the start, Allison was able to serve as a motivating force for Audrey until the true plot kicked in later. Yeah, bro, look at her. Like, I think I think they honestly, they did a really good job on Allison's uh, design. Now, Tom. Tom is Allison's silent protector and the only Boris clone involved in the main story. Whereas Boris the Wolf, rumor has it that during the events of the game, Boris is expect is experiencing a dark survival story of his own. First off, wait, so Boris is alive? Huh? Okay, so Boris is alive, first off. Second off, he's experiencing a dark survival story of his own. Now, I do know a while back they did release Boris and the Dark Revival, or in the Dark Survival, or something like that. Like a little Boris side game. Is that is is that what's happening now? Is does is Boris is Boris doing his little like his own little spin-off game at the same time we're playing the Dark Revival? But hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Wow. Okay. So that's is that everything? I think that might be everything. But yeah, I think that's everything. This is just a cool like such a cool little update to have, especially because like I'm gonna be honest. Like, ar like, around this time, like, pretty recently, I'm gonna be honest, I was actually missing, like, this game. I was, I was, like, thinking, you know what, I kinda miss, like, that certain time point in, like, November and shit, uh, whenever, like, I was playing Bendy and the Ink Machine for the first time, to get hyped up for Bendy and the Dark Revival and all that, and then whenever, like, a couple months after that, whenever I actually fully finished Bendy and the Dark Revival, it was just all so fun. So it's just such good memories, actually. I know it wasn't that long ago. Like, it was literally just a couple months ago. But it just, I, it already is, it's already so nostalgic, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit, it's already, like, nostalgic. I'm already having, like, some good, memorable moments because of those playthroughs. It was super fun playing Ink, the Ink Machine and the Dark Revival on this channel. And thank y'all for supporting those videos, because I love Bendy. It's one of my favorite main menu, exit to main menu. Oh, no, not yet. But yeah, Bendy is definitely one of my favorite uh, indie horror games just ever. Uh, actually, I'm pretty soon planning on making a tier list video where I rank a ton of mascot horror games. And I know for sure, without a doubt, Dark Revival's going into S tier. That is for sure. Dark Revival is an immediate S tier whenever I do eventually get to that video. Also, I remember, y'all remember Wally Franks? Yeah, where's Wally Franks in the archive, boy? I need I need me some Wally Franks. Why, why ain't he in this archive, boy? Yeah, him out here saying, I'm out of here. It's been a while since I've said that, actually. I need to say that. I need to say that again. Nah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a be like, it's gonna be like, uh, like 10 years later, I'm gonna still be uploading videos on this channel, I'm gonna be still saying, I'm out of here, and people are gonna be like, what the heck, what were you saying, I don't get that, I'm gonna be like, you should have been there, you should have been there, we're, you should have been there back in the Bendy and the Ink Machine and Dark Revival days, should have been there, buddy, then you'll get the joke, that is so cool. I just love this so much. I love the Bendy and the Dark Revival. Uh, I love this game. I love all this content. Uh, it's just so cool. Everything about it is just like magnificent. 
so much thought, so much passion put into it with, uh, with like such a good execution as well. Unlike FNAF Security Breach, like FNAF Security Breach still had that uh, passion put into it, passion and hard work and stuff. But it unfortunately like still had a bad execution. Like they just seemed to rush too th too much like stuff. But Bandy and the Dark Revival, it sure took its sweet time to make sure it wasn't glitchy. But, you know, I'd say it was worth it at the end of the day. It was really worth it. I think I've said all my final thoughts, all my final sayings, things I've been wanting to say about Bendy and the Dark Revival. I think that is it. So thank y'all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy. And with that said, I'm out of here.